Sunni Islam is the largest denomination of Islam. Its name comes from the word Sunnah, referring to the behavior of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. The differences between Sunni and Shia Muslims arose from a disagreement over the succession to Muhammad and subsequently acquired broader political significance, as well as theological and juridical dimensions. According to Sunni traditions, Muhammad did not clearly designate a successor, and a small group of Muslims referred back to pre Islamic customs to allow Abu Bakr to seize power at Saqifa after Muhammad's death. This contrasts with the Shia view, which holds that Muhammad announced at the event of Ghadir come his son-in-law and cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib as his successor. Unlike the first three caliphs, Ali was from the same clan as Muhammad, Banu Hashim, and Shia Muslims consider him legitimate, inter alia, by favor of his blood ties to Muhammad, too. Political tensions between Sunnis and Shias continued with varying intensity throughout Islamic history and they have been exacerbated in recent times by ethnic conflicts and the rise of Wahhabism. As of 2009, Sunni Muslims constituted 87 to 90% of the world's Muslim population. Sunni Islam is the world's largest religious denomination, followed by Catholicism. Its adherents are referred to in Arabic as all as Sunnah wa al jamaa the people of the Sunnah and the community or all as Sunnah for short. In English, its doctrines and practices are sometimes called Sunnism, while adherents are known as Sunni Muslims, Sunnis, Sunnites and all as Sunnah. Sunni Islam is sometimes referred to as Orthodox Islam. However, other scholars of Islam, such as John Burton believe that there is no such thing as Orthodox Islam. The Quran, together with hadith especially those collected in Qutb al and binding juristic consensus form the basis of all traditional jurisprudence within Sunni Islam. Sharia rulings are derived from these basic sources, in conjunction with analogical reasoning, consideration of public welfare and juristic discretion, using the principles of jurisprudence developed by the traditional legal schools. In matters of creed, the Sunni tradition upholds the six pillars of Iman faith and comprises the Ash'ari and Maturidi schools of rationalistic theology as well as the textualist school known as traditionalist theology. Terminology <inaudible> 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 Sunni classical Arabic, Sunni Sunni, also commonly referred to as Sunniism, is a term derived from Sunnah, Sunat Sunnah, plural Sunan Sunan, Sunan, meaning habit, usual practice, custom, tradition. The Muslim use of this term refers to the sayings and living habits of the Prophet Muhammad. In Arabic, this branch of Islam is referred to as all as Sunnah wa al jam a Arabic, al al the people of the Sunnah and the community. Which is commonly shortened to all as Sunnah Arabic al al Topic: History. One common mistake is to assume that Sunni Islam represents a normative Islam that emerged during the period after Muhammad's death, and that Sufism and Shiism developed out of Sunni Islam. This perception is partly due to the reliance on highly ideological sources that have been accepted as reliable historical works, and also because the vast majority of the population is Sunni. Both Sunnism and Shiaism are the end products of several centuries of competition between ideologies. Both sects used each other to further cement their own identities and doctrines. The first four caliphs are known among Sunnis as the Rashidun or rightly guided ones. Sunni recognition includes the aforementioned Abu Bakr as the first, Umar as the second, Uthman as the third, and Ali as the fourth. The post-Rashidun period till the fall of the Ottoman Empire Sunnis recognized different rulers as the caliph, though they did not include anyone in the list of the rightly guided ones or Rashidun after the murder of Ali, until the caliphate was constitutionally abolished in Turkey on 3 March 1924. <laughs> Transition of caliphate into dynastic monarchy of Banu Umayyah 
The seeds of metamorphosis of caliphate into kingship were sown, as the second caliph Umar had feared, as early as the regime of the third caliph Uthman, who appointed many of his kinsmen from his clan Banu Umayyah, including Marwan and Walid bin Uqba on important government positions, becoming the main cause of turmoil resulting in his murder and the ensuing infighting during Ali's time and rebellion by Muawiyah, another of Uthman's kinsmen. This ultimately resulted in the establishment of firm dynastic rule of Banu Umayyah after Husayn, the younger son of Ali from Fatima, was killed at the Battle of Karbala. The rise to power of Banu Umayyah, the Meccan tribe of elites who had vehemently opposed Muhammad under the leadership of Abu Sufyan, Muawiyah's father, right up to the conquest of Mecca by Muhammad, as his successors with the accession of Uthman to Caliphate, replaced the egalitarian society formed as a result of Muhammad's revolution to a society stratified between haves and have-nots as a result of nepotism, and in the words of El Hibri through the use of religious charity revenues zakat to subsidize family interests, which Uthman justified as al Sila, pious filial support. Ali, during his rather brief regime after Uthman maintained austere lifestyle and tried hard to bring back the egalitarian system and supremacy of law over the ruler idealized in Muhammad's message, but faced continued opposition, and wars one after another by Aisha Talha Zubair, by Muawiyah, and finally by the Karjits. After he was murdered his followers immediately elected Hassan ibn Ali his elder son from Fatima to succeed him. Hassan, however, shortly afterwards signed a treaty with Muawiyah relinquishing power in favor of the latter, with a condition inter alia, that one of the two who will outlive the other will be the caliph, and that this caliph will not appoint a successor but will leave the matter of selection of the caliph to the public. Subsequently, Hassan was poisoned to death and Muawiyah enjoyed unchallenged power. Not honoring his treaty with Hassan he however nominated his son Yazid to succeed him. Upon Muawiyah's death, Yazid asked Husayn the younger brother of Hassan, Ali's son and Muhammad's grandson, to give his allegiance to Yazid, which he plainly refused. His caravan was cordoned by Yazid's army at Karbala and he was killed with all his male companions, total 72 people, in a day-long battle after which Yazid established himself as a sovereign, though strong public uprising erupted after his death against his dynasty to avenge the massacre of Karbala, but Banu Umayyah were able to quickly suppress them all and ruled the Muslim world, till they were finally overthrown by Banu Abbas. Topic. Caliphate and the dynastic monarchy of Banu Abbas The rule of an caliphate of Banu Umayyah came to an end at the hands of Banu Abbas, a branch of Banu Hashim, the tribe of Muhammad, only to usher another dynastic monarchy styled as caliphate from 750 CE. This period is seen formative in Sunni Islam as the founders of the four schools viz, Abu Hanifa, Malik bin Anas, Shafi'i and Ahmad bin Hanbal all practiced during this time, so also did Jafar al-Sadiq who elaborated the doctrine of imamate, the basis for the Shia religious thought. There was no clearly accepted formula for determining succession in the Abbasid Caliphate. Two or three sons or other relatives of the dying caliph emerged as candidates to the throne, each supported by his own party of supporters. A trial of strength ensued and the most powerful party won and expected favors of the caliph they supported once he ascended the throne. The caliphate of this dynasty ended with the death of the caliph al-Mamun in 833 CE, when the period of Turkish domination began. <laughs> Sunni Islam in the contemporary era The fall of the Ottoman, the biggest Sunni empire in the world for six centuries, the mightiest power in the Mediterranean world and one of the important participants in World War I which joined the war on the side of the Central Powers, bringing caliphate to an end was an epical event. This resulted in Sunni protests in far-off places including the Khilafat movement in India, which was later on upon gaining independence from Britain divided into Sunni-dominated Pakistan and secular India. Pakistan, the most populous Sunni state at its birth, however later got partitioned into Pakistan and Bangladesh. The demise of Ottoman Caliphate also resulted in the emergence of Saudi Arabia, a dynastic absolute monarchy with the support of the British and Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab, the founder of Wahhabism. 
This was followed by a considerable rise in Wahhabism, Salafism and Jihadism under the influence of the preaching of Ibn Taymiyyah a follower of Ahmad bin Hanbal. The expediencies of Cold War resulted in encouragement of Afghan refugees in Pakistan to be radicalized, trained and armed to fight the communist regime backed by USSR forces in Afghanistan giving birth to Taliban. The Taliban wrestled power from the communists in Afghanistan and formed a government under the leadership of Muhammad Omar, who was addressed as the Emir of the Faithful, an honorific way of addressing the Caliph. The Taliban regime was recognized by Pakistan and Saudi Arabia till after 9-11 perpetrated by Osama bin Laden a Saudi national by birth harbored by the Taliban took place, resulting in a war on terror launched against the Taliban. The sequence of events of the 20th century has led to resentment in some quarters of the Sunni community due to the loss of pre-eminence in several previously Sunni-dominated regions such as the Levant, Mesopotamia, the Balkans, the Caucasus and the Indian subcontinent. The latest attempt by a section of Salafis to re-establish a Sunni caliphate can be seen in the appearance of ISIS whose leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is known among his followers as Caliph and Amir al mauminin the commander of the faithful. Jihadism is however being opposed from within the Muslim community, Ummah as it is called in Arabic in all quarters of the world as evidenced by turnout of almost 2% of the Muslim population in London protesting. Adherence Sunnis believe that the companions of Muhammad were the best of Muslims. This belief is based upon prophetic traditions such as one narrated by Abdullah, son of Masud, in which Muhammad said, "...the best of the people are my generation, then those who come after them, then those who come after them." Support for this view is also found in the Quran, according to Sunnis. Sunnis also believe that the companions were true believers since it was the companions who were given the task of compiling the Quran. Furthermore, narrations that were narrated by the companions ahadith are considered by Sunnis to be a second source of knowledge of the Muslim faith. A study conducted by the Pew Research Center in 2010 and released January 2011 found that there are 1.62 billion Muslims around the world, and it is estimated over 90% are Sunni. Organizational structure Sunni Islam does not have a formal hierarchy. Leaders are informal, and gain influence through study to become a scholar of Islamic law, called sharia. According to the Islamic Center of Columbia, South Carolina, anyone with the intelligence and the will can become an Islamic scholar. During midday mosque services on Fridays, the congregation will choose a well-educated person to lead the service, known as a khatib, one who speaks. Topic: Jurisprudence. Topic: Schools of law. There are many intellectual traditions within the field of Islamic law, often referred to as legal schools. These varied traditions reflect differing viewpoints on some laws and obligations within Islamic law. While one school may see a certain act as a religious obligation, another may see the same act as optional. These schools aren't regarded as sects, rather, they represent differing viewpoints on issues that are not considered the core of Islamic belief. Historians have differed regarding the exact delineation of the schools based on the underlying principles they follow. Many traditional scholars saw Sunni Islam in two groups, al al rai or people of reason, due to their emphasis on scholarly judgment and discourse, and al al hadith or people of traditions, due to their emphasis on restricting juristic thought to only what is found in scripture. Ibn Khaldun defined the Sunni schools as three, the Hanafi school representing reason, the Zahirite school representing tradition, and a broader, middle school encompassing the Shafi'ite, Malachite and Hanbalite schools. During the Middle Ages, the Mamluk Sultanate in Egypt delineated the acceptable Sunni schools as only Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i and Hanbali, excluding the Zahiri school. The Ottoman Empire later reaffirmed the official status of four schools as a reaction to the Shiite character of their ideological and political archrival, the Persian Safavids, though former Prime Minister of Sudan al-Sadiq al-Mahdi, as well as the Amman message issued by King Abdullah II of Jordan, recognize the Zahiri and keep the number of Sunni schools at five. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Differences in the schools. Interpreting Islamic law by deriving specific rulings, such as how to pray, is commonly known as Islamic jurisprudence. The schools of law all have their own particular tradition of interpreting this jurisprudence. As these schools represent clearly spelled out methodologies for interpreting Islamic law, there has been little change in the methodology with regard to each school. While conflict between the schools was often violent in the past, today the schools recognize one another as viable legal methods rather than sources of error or heresy in contrast to one another. Each school has its evidences, and differences of opinion are generally respected. Conflict between the schools was often violent in the past. <laughs> Pillars of Iman All the branches of Sunni Islam testify to six principal articles of faith known as the Six Pillars of Iman Arabic for faith, which are believed to be essential. These are Belief in the oneness of God Belief in the angels of God Belief in the divine revelations books, Belief in the prophets of God Belief in resurrection after death and the day of judgment and Belief in preordainment Kedar. These six articles are what all present-day Sunnis agree on, from those who adhere to traditional Sunnism to those who adhere to latter-day movements. Additionally, classical Sunni Islam also outlined numerous other cardinal doctrines from the 8th century onwards in the form of organized creeds such as the Creed of Tahawi, in order to codify what constituted Sunni orthodoxy. While none of these creeds gained the importance attributed to the Nicene Creed in Christianity, primarily because ecumenical councils never happened in Islam, the beliefs outlined in these creeds became the orthodox doctrine by IJMA, or binding consensus. But while most of the tenets outlined in the classical creeds are accepted by all Sunnis, some of these doctrines have been rejected by the aforementioned movements as lacking strictly scriptural precedent. Traditionally, these other important Sunni articles of faith have included the following those that are controversial today because of their rejection by such groups shall be denoted by an asterisk Belief in the six principal articles of faith being essential for salvation for Muslims Belief in God having created creation with his wisdom Belief in Muhammad having been the seal of the prophets or the last prophet sent to mankind Belief in the Quran being the eternal, uncreated word of God Belief in the beatific vision being a reality in the afterlife, even if it will not be all-encompassing in the manner of it remains unknown. Belief in the night journey of Muhammad having happened in a bodily form, while he was awake. Belief in the intercession of Muhammad being a reality on the last day. Belief in God's covenant with Adam and his offspring having been true. Belief in Abraham having been God's intimate friend. Belief in Moses having conversed directly with God without a mediator Belief in the idea that wrong works in themselves does not make a Muslim an unbeliever, and that it is forbidden to declare takfir on those who know that what they are doing is wrong Belief in it being wrong to make a distinction between the various prophets of God Belief in believing in that which all the prophets brought from God Belief in avoiding deviations, divisions, and differences. In the fold of Islam Belief in venerating all the companions of Muhammad Belief in the existence of saints, and in venerating them and accepting the traditional narratives of their lives and miracles Asterisk. Belief that saints, while exalted in their own right, occupy an infinitely lesser rank than the prophets and that one of the prophets is greater than all the saints put together. Asterisk. Belief in the signs of the Apocalypse Belief that Jesus is the promised Messiah of God and that all Muslims await his second coming. Theological traditions Some Islamic scholars faced questions that they felt were not explicitly answered in the Quran and the Sunnah, especially questions with regard to philosophical conundra such as the nature of God, the existence of human free will, or the eternal existence of the Quran. Various schools of theology and philosophy developed to answer these questions, each claiming to be true to the Quran and the Muslim tradition Sunnah. 
Among Sunni Muslims, various schools of thought in theology began to be born out of the sciences of Kalam in opposition to the textualists who stood by affirming texts without delving into philosophical speculation as they saw it as an innovation in Islam. The following were the three dominant schools of theology that grew. All three of these are accepted by Muslims around the globe, and are considered within Islamic orthodoxy. The key beliefs of classical Sunni Islam are all agreed upon being the six pillars of Iman and codified in the treatise on Akidah by Imam Ahmad ibn Muhammad al-Tahawi in his Akidah Tahawiya. Ash'ari Founded by Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari this theological school of Akita was embraced by many Muslim scholars and developed in parts of the Islamic world throughout history. Al Ghazali wrote on the Creed discussing it and agreeing upon some of its principles. Ash'ari theology stresses divine revelation over human reason. Contrary to the Mu'tazilites, they say that ethics cannot be derived from human reason, but that God's commands, as revealed in the Quran and the Sunnah the practices of Muhammad and his companions as recorded in the traditions, or hadith, are the sole source of all morality and ethics. Regarding the nature of God and the divine attributes, the Ash'ari rejected the Mu'tazili position that all Quranic references to God as having real attributes were metaphorical. The Ash'aris insisted that these attributes were as they best befit his majesty." The Arabic language is a wide language in which one word can have fifteen different meanings, so the Asheris endeavor to find the meaning that best befits God and is not contradicted by the Quran. Therefore, when God states in the Quran, He who does not resemble any of his creation, this clearly means that God cannot be attributed with body parts because he created body parts. Asherists tend to stress divine omnipotence over human free will and they believe that the Quran is eternal and uncreated. <laughs> Maturidi Founded by Abu Mansur al-Maturidi died 944. Maturidiya was a minority tradition until it was accepted by the Turkish tribes of Central Asia previously they had been Ash'ari and followers of the Shafi'i school, it was only later on migration into Anatolia that they became Hanafi and followers of the Maturidi creed. One of the tribes, the Seljuk Turks, migrated to Turkey, where later the Ottoman Empire was established. Their preferred school of law achieved a new prominence throughout their whole empire although it continued to be followed almost exclusively by followers of the Hanafi school while followers of the Shafi and Maliki schools within the empire followed the Ash'ari and Athari schools of thought. Thus, wherever can be found Hanafi followers, there can be found the Maturidi creed. Traditionalist Traditionalist theology is a movement of Islamic scholars who reject rationalistic Islamic theology in favor of strict textualism in interpreting the Quran and Sunnah. The name derives from tradition in its technical sense as translation of the Arabic word hadith. It is also sometimes referred to by several other names. Adherents of traditionalist theology believe that the zahir literal, apparent meaning of the Quran and the hadith have sole authority in matters of belief and law, and that the use of rational disputation is forbidden even if it verifies the truth. They engage in a literal reading of the Quran, as opposed to one engaged in tawil metaphorical interpretation. They do not attempt to conceptualize the meanings of the Quran rationally, and believe that their realities should be consigned to God alone tafwid. In essence, the text of the Quran and Hadith is accepted without asking, how, or, by la kaifa. Traditionalist theology emerged among scholars of Hadith who eventually coalesced into a movement called Al al Hadith under the leadership of Ahmad ibn Hanbal. In matters of faith, they were pitted against Mu'tazilites and other theological currents, condemning many points of their doctrine as well as the rationalistic methods they used in defending them. In the 10th century al-Ash'ari and al-Maturidi found a middle ground between Mu'tazilite rationalism and Hanbalite literalism, using the rationalistic methods championed by Mu'tazilites to defend most tenets of the traditionalist doctrine. Although the mainly Hanbali scholars who rejected this synthesis were in the minority, their emotive, narrative-based approach to faith remained influential among the urban masses in some areas, particularly in Abbasid Baghdad, while Ash'arism and Maturidism are often called the Sunni orthodoxy. 
Traditionalist theology has thrived alongside it, laying rival claims to be the orthodox Sunni faith. In the modern era it has had a disproportionate impact on Islamic theology, having been appropriated by Wahhabi and other traditionalist Salafi currents and spread well beyond the confines of the Hanbali school of law. <laughs> Sunni mysticism There has also been a rich tradition of mysticism within Sunni Islam, which has most prominently manifested itself in the principal orders of Sunni Sufism. Historically, Sufism became an incredibly important part of Islam and one of the most widespread and omnipresent aspects of Muslim life. In Islamic civilization from the early medieval period onwards, when it began to permeate nearly all major aspects of Sunni Islamic life in regions stretching from India and Iraq to Senegal. Sufism continued to remain a crucial part of daily Islamic life until the 20th century, when its historical influence upon Islamic civilization began to be combated by the rise of Salafism and Wahhabism. Islamic scholar Timothy Winter has remarked, in classical, mainstream, medieval Sunni Islam, the idea of orthodox Islam would not have been possible without Sufism, and that the classical belief in Sufism being an essential component of Islam has only weakened in some quarters of the Islamic world, a generation or two ago, with the rise of Salafism. In the modern world, the classical interpretation of Sunni orthodoxy, which sees in Sufism an essential dimension of Islam alongside the disciplines of jurisprudence and theology, is represented by institutions such as Al-Azhar University and Zaytuna College, with Al-Azhar's current Grand Imam Ahmed El Tayeb defining Sunni orthodoxy as being a follower of any of the four schools of legal thought Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki or Hanbali and also, of the Sufism of Imam Junaid of Baghdad in doctrines, manners and spiritual purification." In the 11th century, Sufism, which had previously been a less «codified» trend in Islamic piety, began to be «ordered and crystallized» into orders which have continued until the present day. All these orders were founded by a major Sunni Islamic saint, and some of the largest and most widespread included the Qadiriya after Abdul Qadir Gilani d. 1166, the Rifiya after Ahmed al rifai d. 1182, the Chishtiya after Moinuddin Chishti d. 1236, the Shadiliya after Abul Hasan Ash Shadhili d. 1258, and the Naqshbandiya after Baha ud Din Naqshband Bukhari d. 1389. Contrary to popular perception in the West, however, neither the founders of these orders nor their followers ever considered themselves to be anything other than Orthodox Sunni Muslims, and in fact all of these orders were attached to one of the four Orthodox legal schools of Sunni Islam. Thus, the Qadiriya order was Hanbali, with its founder, Abdul Qadir Gilani, being a renowned Hanbali jurist, the Chishtiya was Hanafi, the Shadiliya order was Maliki, and the Naqshbandiya order was Hanafi. Thus. Many of the most eminent defenders of Islamic orthodoxy, such as Abdul Qadir Gilani, Ghazali, and the Sultan Salah ad-Din Saladin were connected with Sufism. The contemporary Salafi and Wahhabi strands of Sunnis, however, do not accept the traditional stance on mystical practices. <laughs> Sunni view of Hadith The Quran as it exists today in book form was compiled by Muhammad's companions Sahaba within a handful of months of his death, and is accepted by all sects of Islam. However, there were many matters of belief and daily life that were not directly prescribed in the Quran, but were actions that were observed by Muhammad and the early Muslim community. Later generations sought out oral traditions regarding the early history of Islam, and the practices of Muhammad and his first followers, and wrote them down so that they might be preserved. These recorded oral traditions are called hadith. Muslim scholars have through the ages sifted through the hadith and evaluated the chain of narrations of each tradition, scrutinizing the trustworthiness of the narrators and judging the strength of each hadith accordingly. Qutb <laughs> al-Siddha Qutb al-Siddha are six books containing collections of hadiths. 
Sunni Muslims accept the hadith collections of Bukhari and Muslim as the most authentic sahih, or correct, and while accepting all hadiths verified as authentic, grant a slightly lesser status to the collections of other recorders. There are, however, four other collections of hadith that are also held in particular reverence by Sunni Muslims, making a total of six. Sahih al-Bukhari of Muhammad al-Bukhari Sahih Muslim of Muslim ibn al-Hajjaj Sunan al-Sugra of al-Nasi Sunan Abu Dawud of Abu Dawud Jami at Tirmidhi of al-Tirmidhi Sunan ibn Majah of ibn Majathir are also other collections of hadith which also contain many authentic hadith and are frequently used by scholars and specialists. Examples of these collections include Musanif of Abd al-Razak of Abd al-Razak as Sanani Musnad of Ahmad ibn Hanbal Mustadrik of al-Hakim Mawata of Imam Malik Sahih ibn Hibban Sahih ibn Kuzayma of ibn Kuzayma Sunan al-Darimi of al-Darimi Topic See also Islamic schools and branches Sunni disambiguation 2016 International Conference on Sunni Islam in Grozny